Hello there and welcome to my Artie Corner here on YouTube. I'm Angela Porter, also known as Artword, and I've already welcomed you, so I'd just like to say a very quick thank you to everybody who's subscribed, has given thumbs up, has left such lovely comments on the work I've been doing. I appreciate that so much. Now, today I want to try to finish the Tangles for Inktober off. I know it's not the end of October, but I am well behind with the contracted work I'm supposed to be doing. So if I can do that today, that'll be great. And what I'll do is then after Inktober, I'll return to them. If there's any particularly want me to return to and have a look at them in more detail. Does that sound good? I hope so. But then my plans don't always go to plan. So we shall see. So the very first pattern is one that is completely new to me. Um, wrong pen. It's um, called Avro and it's by Yvonne Westover, who's a CZT, I think in Canada. And I'm going to do, because it's new to me, I'm going to have a look at it as a grid. And so I'm going to start with a grid that goes, oh, let me, let me start by drawing in a border around the edge of my paper. I always feel happier if I've got a, an edge, a border to my work. I have done some stuff recently where I've let the tangles go right up to the edge, but it just never feels right to me. I like that empty space around it, that little white frame. Okay, so this is a um, based on a grid, and I'm sure that it can be done in other ways. So I'm going to draw my grid in. I'm using a Tombow Fudenosuke pen here, which means the line thicknesses are going to vary depending on my pressure of my pen. My grid is very wonky, but I'm very wonky today as well, so that's fine. And uh, I think I'll split this in, if I split it into half, I'm going, and a half again, I'm going to get narrow um, rectangles, so I think I'll do it roughly in thirds. So that will give me the um, squares or squarish shapes at least. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a frame around this as well. Which yes, I know it goes outside my little border and I've managed to smudge the ink in that bottom corner. So note to self, don't be so hasty in moving things around. I've got a little line creeping out there, so rather than try and connect it or make it disappear in some way, I'm going to put little bumps on the end of all the lines in the outside border. There was one there, and that just makes it look deliberate, which is the important thing. Okay, I've said I haven't done Avro before, and so I'm going to go through the steps in Yvonne's step out. So I'm going to start on a diagonal, roughly in the centre there, and draw a line up to it, like so. Then the next shape is a kind of backwards S shape, and it starts a little bit way down side here but it ends up in the corner down here and it needs to kind of touch the center of this so I'm going to do my S curve like that. Then we're going to start adding what looks like feathers here. Now in her original one I think the lines there they are they're straight but I've curved mine so I just feel that a little curve on the end would work. And then another one here. Oh, mine are ending up looking like petals, aren't they? Rather than having that end bit. Let me have a check. Ah, yeah, well done, Angela. <laughs> Okay, we're going to work with it as it is, because there should be a square that comes around here somewhere. Um, and perhaps I can still 
going to do it. Is it like a square? It is sort of. But I'm going I'm still going to go here, along here, up and down. And put that little square in like that. She took the inspiration from a the logo of um Avro Canada, which is an aeronautical company. And um so this is sort of like the side of the wings that go across the A. So it's it's a very, very interesting kind of inspiration. And of course, naturally, I've gone and done it all myself. So what I'm going to do is, in her pattern, she actually puts aura lines, well, one of her variations, she puts aura lines this way. But what I'm going to do is I think, so I want to, I think I'll weave... like this. I was thinking about using that side to weave as well but I think I'll just keep them straight because that is in keeping with that logo like so. And I am going to put a smaller triangle in there. I think this part here is redundant um, in the way I've drawn this but um, yeah perhaps perhaps if I I did want that plain triangle you know plain triangle there in the centre but if I add the black like this then that creates in fact I might actually just bring it down it looked a bit odd as it was. It didn't seem to connect to anywhere. So that's what mine's... Mm, yeah. Actually. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll work. That'll be all right. So, yeah, another one that vexes me. So I could do all of these in the same way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect them on so I'll reflect this one so I'll start in this center point again draw that line and then I'm going to draw that S shape in then it's a case of creating the first aura second one third one and I'm going to put my black rectangle down here because I've if I've done it in one I'll do it in the others and once you repeat something and make it look like it belongs there it doesn't look like an error anymore it looks part of the pattern okay so I'm going to start by ordering here, then weave these across, put the last one in there, and then to mirror here, I need to go this way, it's because I'm reflecting this way I mirrored in this direction, so I need to mirror this way. So again, I'm going to draw to the centre, like that. These are all going to connect here, so I can draw my S line in, like that. And perhaps I'll do this one while I'm at it, so I get... I'm getting familiar with it. I can see what I'm trying to do here like so. Then it's a case of creating these three wing shapes and then put my little black block in. So let's do the same here.
and put my little black block in there as best as I can. Not perfect. Then it's the black triangle, like so. I'm not entirely sure I've done this right, you know, or got the reflections right, but it is what it is for today. And I'm going to, I will aura these, but I'm going to try to get the same number in and match these up here. As I did on that side. And then I'm getting something that looks very much like an arrow or a crystal head. It's quite interesting. So again, I'm going to do my best to match these up as I go. Like so. And we're getting that interesting pattern in the background. That is interesting. Okay. So here I'm going to go back to the original, two original ways of doing this. But what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to have a look at how I could um, change how I fill this area in down here. There we go. And so let's do these wings again. And I'll try the more straight edge to them. And I'll have a look at that, the last one, which doesn't seem to actually touch. Could be wrong. No, I'll keep it the same as I've already done. Because I quite like that. I end up some, this reminds me of a flower of some kind. So what I'm going to do here, instead of filling these black blocks in, I'm actually going to put those two straight lines there so it's almost like I've got a petal stuck in half. And I've got a distinct triangle here now, haven't I? A different kind of shape. Can you see the triangle here? So I think I'm going to play on that, to be honest. I think I might. Let me have a look. I'm going to put a smaller triangle down at the base here and I will fill this with black. Like so. And then I'm going to aura it to separate it. So that's, that's an interesting one. I've got all of this space here to fill in, but I'm going to leave this one blank as if it's a as if it's um, a flower. And perhaps do something with these lower ones. But perhaps not fill this section in, perhaps fill outside in. So how can I do that? I'm going to do that weaving thing again, but I'm just going to create it with under the petals. Or what look like petals now, because I've created a flower. And I'm going to do the same here. And I started on the curved side. So. That little bit in the bottom, I'm just going to fill in with some black just to give that kind of density. 
I'm not going to try and join these up. If I if I'd thought about it, I would have had these these areas looking very much the same top and bottom and they would have joined, the points would have joined to create um, a pattern in between that could be filled in. But I am just going to do something with this one on the flower where I'm just going to draw little triangles in these spaces. just to suggest that kind of pattern or continuity that goes across. And if I was to draw this in a bigger grid, I would definitely make sure these points connect on either side so I get some interesting shapes going on. So that looks very Egyptian to me, the kinds of flowers you see on Egyptian columns and so on, as you can see there. So I have got a big section here that I think I will put an aura line in regardless because it just feels that it needs it. And then in this section, I'm going to use a finer pen. And uh, how can I fill this in? I'll just do very simply. little print on. This is a pattern that has a lot of potential. I can see all the variations that Yvonne has on her web page and although I haven't used them there's no reason you know there's something I'd like to look at and gain inspiration from because it's a pattern that needs an awful lot of exploration, I think, to bring out all of its possibilities. Because I want to try to get three tangles done today so I can nail Inktober. And then go back to focusing on, well, I'll still be doing videos, but I seem to, Inktober seems to take an awful lot of my time. Do you know, I'm not too keen on these triangles here now, but they are what they are tidy that one up because if they don't parallel the lines they look a bit wonky and odd. I've left this here blank but I really do think I now need to pop some print on pin and I think that central line may just disappear into them. I'm hoping it will. Certainly with shadow or colour it will practically disappear I'm sure. Know, if I thought about this, that I was going to fill this in, I would have chosen a different filling pattern, but it's okay. So that's Avro by Yvonne, Yvonne Westover CZT. So that's today's day 29. Day 30 is Save You, which is by Nadine Roller CZT. And again, this is another one that is entirely new to me. And I'm going to do this. And it's a floral pattern, but I'm going to do, I think, half of it because I can. And I'm going to have half of it growing out of here. Or perhaps, yeah, shall I? Half of it? Yeah, half would be good, as if it's tucked under this. So you start by making um, a nice round flowery shape like this and then we're going to connect the sides of these with triangles with a zigzag excuse me a moment okay so <laughs> so I'm just connecting these somebody called me on Facebook messenger, a video call. I go, what? And it was a wrong call. It was somebody I know, but you know, that's fine. So it is what it is. You can see then that in the centre here, 
we've got this large sort of star-shaped space. I'll come back to look at that afterwards. But then the next step is to, or what you can do next is to add another flower around this. But instead of going from these points, we're going in between and we're going to start the flower a little bit above the petals, like so. And mine's going to stop there because I'll go off the page otherwise. And then we do the same thing where we're going to connect, imagine, imagine that we're connecting them with the little triangles. The, ult the ultimate answer is that we're actually going to put little triangles underneath them like this. And that suggests we've got the same kind of thing going on as we have here. Now, part of me thinks I could actually extend that down here, but let's... We could, couldn't we? So they would sort of come down here and create a little petal in there. Hmm. Hmm. But in a flower, they wouldn't do that, would they? So let's keep it vaguely real. And these, this section, these ones you can colour in black. Like so. Like so. Like so. And then Nadine coloured all of this section in black here. But I think I'm going to... I do enjoy an aura, don't I? So I'm actually going to aura around these and bring out that star shape in the center, just that little bit more. I'm also going to draw my, start to draw my edge in here and here that would make some kind of sense to do that. Okay, and what Nadine has done is she's filled inside here with little stars and then coloured it in black. So what I may do is actually colour it in black and come back with a white gel pen to add the patterns in that I'd like there, which makes a bit more sense to me this morning. But of course you don't have to colour it in black. You could use any colour you like. You could add any pattern there you like. I just think that the graphic nature of black, black and white, will work well. And of course it goes ties in then with Avro, the first pattern. I've got a different... I have, I've got one here that's got, I think, no, this one is the same kind of pen. It's just a bit softer. I do have a bit of a love of these flexible nib pens. I do have to say that because they allow you to draw or colour in larger areas. I'm sure I have one that was a different thickness weight. Yeah, I do. Yesterday, I spent, yesterday evening, I spent some time sorting out bits of artwork that were everywhere here. There's the disadvantage of drawing on pieces of paper is that if I don't put them somewhere, soon after I've done something, I, I may never find them again. And um, so I'm starting to stick them into my sketchbook and um, make use of that um, as, as a way of storing all my ideas and variations and the patterns that I particularly like and so on. OK, next job, corner rounding. So here and here. I'm also going to round the corners where the original flowers were there. Okie dokes. So I was sticking things into my sketchbook and it's funny how days or weeks can go and you suddenly realise, gosh, I actually quite like that now. 
So another lesson to be learned is that it is perfectly okay to, um, oh, not perfectly okay, but it's, a, it's, it's something I think I'd recommend doing, especially if, like me, you can't always see what you're, um, artwork is really like soon after you've created it is just to pop it to one side and just surprise yourself you know, days or weeks or months later and have a look at it again and you look at it with fresh eyes and you go well, actually that's not so bad why did I complain about the colours I'd chosen that's okay yeah not good choice there but I like the design and I've always got those designs then for reference later on to redraw and to adapt if I need to okay so what I'm doing here is I'm drawing in these spirals and I'm adding some little weight at the end or turning the end of the spiral into like a curvy teardrop shape, almost like a little leaf because I think this is how I feel this needs to go. Like so. And then I can, they're a bit wonky in places, but I'm fine with the wonkiness. What I'm going to do is I'm going to join them together so that I, again, repeat that end. And basically it's, it's like um, you've almost got a branch here or a, an area there where you've got two like um, spirally mukas on the end. And again, I'm just going to go and tidy up my line work. So I've just realised this is one of my old Tombow Fudenosuke pens, which means it's not the... I can't get the finest lines from it. I, I would have when it was fresh and new. But it's okay. It, it's doing the job. I like the bold lines anyway, and I'm quite happy with the wonky and the slight unevenness today but I'm going where there are little corners just to fill those in with black and not have strange little shapes left again I'm just going to go and give a little bit of line weight where different elements meet I say line weight a little bit of ink almost like we're soldering these things together Going to do the same at the tips. This is much easier and neater done with a finer nibbed pen, admittedly, but this one is in my hand. So make use of that. doing those little sections underneath but that's exactly what I'm going to go back and do now these little corners and little nooks and crannies yeah I did on that one but not the others there we go so that gives an interesting kind of pattern and I could do the same with the outside edge I could but I think I want to keep the outside ones this really kind of interesting shape that we've got going on. Oh, I know that in Nadine's step out, she actually uses um, shading with a graphite pencil to bring out dimension with these, but I can't see a small space without adding pattern and so on to it. Oh, I didn't do that one quite right, but it'll be all right. I'll just fudge it a bit at the corner at the edge. It'll be fine. There, that'll work a bit better perhaps. Don't draw attention to it, nobody will know. So I've got these interesting shapes, these petals going on, and I think I'll help that idea of petalness by drawing that kind of shape in here. I'm not going to get one in there. 
Again, if I need to adjust these, these areas, I will. I'm not afraid of adding more black. So that's my version of um, Save You. And I'm tempted to put just another quick one in here. In fact, I might do, and I might choose to use a different pen. Let me have a look. Oh, I've put all my pens in a tray, so that means I'm never going to find the ones I'm looking for now. There's no one. Where's the other? I'm never going to find the ones I want. I've got no seven, no one. Oh, there's the 05. Actually, the 07 might actually be a better, better bet here because it's got a nice broad line, just like the others. So I'm going to just draw one in that's a bit smaller. I'm going to pop the triangles in here to create that star within. I am going to add that aura around them because I like that. And then instead of adding another round of these petals, I'm going to add some shapes like this which look a bit like some leaves which I could have done on these. The other thing I didn't do with the first one is I didn't use any line weighting adding thickness to lines to suggest dimensions so I'm going to do that on this one. So my petals I'm going to the left and the bottom. In my star in between I'm going to go to the top and right of the lines. So I'm looking at the shape on its own, and this would be the right-hand line, this is the left-hand line, this is the top, this is the bottom. I'm going to add some line weight there. Then, oh, which is pointless because I was going to fill that in black any, with black anyway. So let's just do that quickly. But I could have filled it in in a different way. So, very versatile pattern I think this one's going to be. And I love the fact it's got a star in the middle. And I'm amazed I haven't seen this one before. But that's the problem with Zentangle in some ways, is there's so many things that are going on. So here, what I'm going to do in the middle of this one is I'm going to draw a line up. Then I'm going to do this on either side because I really like that shape. So, almost like we've got stamen there. And here I can guess where the centre line would be. And it's fine, it works every time. Sorry, I apologise for all the spinning around here. This one appears to be a little bit taller the one but it's okay because they are flowers and flowers can be very uneven and then with my 0.25 here as well as putting a little bit of corner rounding in I'm also going to pop these lines in just to suggest I have leaves here instead of anything else I, can I like that one. I do like that. Corner rounding. Yes. We need to do a bit more. Which I'm going to do here. Actually, at the top, I'm going to put, using the finer liner, the finer, finer liner, the finer, the fine, the finer, fine liner, something that looks like a little leaf or a little something at the top there. I'm going to go and just thicken that line a little bit because it does look a bit, in, you know, weak and insipid compared to the other one. But I have this pen in my hand. Have pen will draw. I've got a meeting to go to this afternoon. And so I always have a notebook with me. Got my camera as well in the hope that the weather might clear up a bit. And um, so, yeah, so I'll be doing an awful lot of drawing. 
So there is Save You. So I've got two of them. As much as I want to, I really want to do a third one. How much time? Oh, I don't know how much time I've got. 15 minutes on this part. So, um, but, yeah, let's, let's go for it. Let's just do a third one here. perhaps this one I will have going off the edge of the paper because I can and then it would come back here and would go behind there perhaps a bit ridiculous because I've got this really awkward shape but yeah I didn't think about that did I so I never go to a meeting or anything else without notebook pens not to make notes but essentially because I can And um, there'd be one, there's gap there, so that's okay. But it, it would go there, that's better. And with this one, I'm going to, instead of ordering the star inside, I'm going to aura these here. I'm not going to do anything with these ones. I'll I'll do something with the edge. I might colour the whole edge in black by the looks on it. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw these shapes and I'm going to aura downwards, a bit like crescent moon. So, try to get them to the edge, Angela. And try not to overshoot the line. And then here, I'm going to go back and add one like this. And possibly, see how I feel? I'm going to put a second aura inside. So, I'm going back. And then I've got these interestingly shaped like cone shapes going on there. I did do these kinds of shapes in an earlier tangle pattern for, for Inktober. But I can't remember which one it was. So I am going to I'm going to go to this line here and I'm going to fill this in all of this in with black. These sections. That one needs an aura in it, like so, as I fill that in a bit much. It's fine, it'll be okay. So I'll have pen and I almost probably spend my time listening because I do listen when I'm drawing. I find it harder to talk, but um, there is a skill to it. And sometimes that's why I fade out while I'm talking or stop halfway through something is because my brain kicks into I need to focus on what I'm drawing, not what I'm on, not on what I am saying. Actually, this needs to disappear there as well, that line, outside line. Get it. But it'll be fine. I'll do, I'll do the black on the outside with an alcohol marker because it will make quick work of it. Okay. So I need a white gel pen for these. The other thing I wanted to do is these little bits here. And I think this would be quite nice if I Pop some lines in that sort of radiate out from a point at the centre of these. Like so. 
They end up looking quite shell-like, don't they? That works. So I've got more curving in the same kind of direction, so I eventually work that one out. That actually works quite nicely. And, uh, just pop an aura around those and that works. Now I'm going to go back and just round these areas here just so that it mimics the shape of these. Awful lot of black going on here, but that's okay, we can live with that. Well, I can. There we go. So a different kind of feeling going on here. And then um, it's almost like I want to put something in these. That's what I'll do. Just a little bit there, a little bit here, like so. And um, just to add that kind of feeling to them. And I can also change the outside bit of outside shape just by adding some black in here as well, like so, so that that shape mimic they mimic each other so that's quite fun okay and the last thing I want to do with both of these is I'm going to add an aura in here before I start doing the tangle pattern for day 31 which is Pangea It's my aura, aura there, it dips down, but it'll still have the line there. So I'm just going to fill that in because I can. And I'm going to put auras in around these little leaves here at the edge and just fill that with black as well. Okay, so that doesn't look like they, oh yes it does. As I'm looking at my glasses on, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they all... They all fall one into another, but I can bring that out with, um, <coughs> excuse me, with um, shadows. So I'm going to fill the last bit of my space with Pangea. And I'm then going to have a very quick look at how we can fill those in. And Pangea is a very random shaped kind of pattern where they nestle one into another. Like so. And you just aura around and create these little splats. I think of them as splats. It looks like mud's been thrown down onto the ground and it's splattered itself into a lump or jelly. So I do want some that will go up to the edge, but some of them will just be part Pangea. So some may spill over a little bit outside the line, and I'm fine about that. Okay, so. And there'll be a little bit of a one there. And uh, let's have a look. So that one can spill out a little bit. And then I've got one last one here, which can also spill out like that. So Pangea creates a kind of reticulum. And you, you can try and plan it out, but I think it's best if you don't. And of course, these shapes can be filled with all kinds of patterns, of other tangles, of texture patterns, with aura and all sorts. And the one that was shown by Zent Zentangle, I think, when they... Um, launched this was mirth and um, so I will do that because I can and for my mirth I'm going to start here and I'm going to put a a kind of c-shape in I'm going to draw lines that have some weight on at the end so I'm using just line pressure here 
um, pressure on my pen to thicken the lines. Then I'm going to draw, close that C shape and fill that gap in with black. Then I'm going to do the same thing where I draw almost horizontally above that line in this direction. And I'm using my line weight to alter the trajectory of these lines, like so. And then we're going to carry on around doing the same kind of idea. I think here this one's going to go like so. And these will be different every time because they, they are dictated by the shape that you put them in. So that's a mirth. But other patterns will work really nicely. So I'm going to start with a C shape again. But instead of doing mirth, I'm going to start at the end. Imagine I'm curling around. I'm going to do Senna, which is another one of these patterns that tends to go in its own direction. And although you could try to control it, it's fun not to. So I'm starting to walk around this central line here. And the shape of my line's subtly changed, the direction in which it's bending has. Because I can't get as much flex on this pen to get the thicker lines at the bottom that I'd like. I'm just going back and adding some ink to them. Now here I'm starting to having to curl round the end of that C that I had. So there is a commonality between this pattern and Mirth in, in some ways. They're not dissimilar. And this one really does look like it's, you know, flowing out of the hole in its own little way. And I can enhance this shape here just to help with that. Okay. Another fun thing to do with this is to use... It, it's. I'm going to use these lines here that come from mirth as if they are going underneath here so I've got five lines so there's another one there and there's a fifth one there so I've got all of these lines here but I'm going to treat these almost like it's a beam of holly ball so I'm thickening the outside lines and then I'm going to draw some that go underneath Perhaps not as wide. Perhaps I'll keep them to three wide. And perhaps here we'll have one that goes under here. So holly ball was a pattern earlier on in Inktober. And if I add weight, make the lines thicker on the outside, it helps to separate one from another. That's my theory anyway. So, so we have that going on so it looks like this has carried on and morphed into another pattern and I'm going to do the same here where I'm going to choose this line perhaps and have it coming in here and what am I going to do with that? Let's do some mukas then. So I've got these lines sort of joining together here. I'm filling this in with mucha. I'm going to add another mucha here. So I've got these going on, which is quite fun. And then I can, I'm going to go here and add another one. But it's going to be a mega big one by the looks of it because that's how my pen went. Let's draw it back there, it'd be fine. 
Can add some black in there though, because that's a tiny space. Like so. Not going to get another mucha there, but what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to fill this in with black. And then I can grow some mucha to fill this space, as mucas have a habit of doing. And because I've started filling the small spaces in with black, I'm going to continue to do so which again ties all of this together in some way. And I could get another mooka in here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to chicken out on that one. Perhaps not chicken out, I'm just making that decision. This is what I want to do. I want this very graphic kind of black here. Looks like I'm going to be trying to find some way of whiting out these here, I think. I've just realised I've put a lot of black here, but... I have a plan. We're going to aura this so I can leave a bit, a bit of space there around it, which will be quite interesting. OK. I'm not going to carry on doing this particularly, though I could. But let's have a look at other ways of filling this in. You can fill this in with any pattern you, you can possibly think of. I'm going to take a nice big orb here and I'm going to surround it by smaller ones, just filling in the, any little gaps between them as I go, because it's tedious to fill them, come back and fill them all in later. And then I'm going to go around these with smaller orbs. Again, if there's any little gaps, as I see them, I'm just going to fill them in. And smaller again. And then that will look like this is doming out. Hopefully. As if these are further, the smaller they are, the more ink there is, the darker the space is, even though there's white space in there. And the further away they look, or the more in shadow. So it's playing with the size and shape of the filling pattern to give a different feeling to this here. So there's that one there. So let's reverse it on another one. I'll reverse that idea here where I'm going to nice big orbs, not necessarily very circular, whatever shape I can fit into the edge. And if I need to fill in with black in between, I will do. Because that is how I'm filling my this kind of pattern in today, is with, I'm using a fair amount of black. So I've got some nice big ones there. So the next sort of like go around, we're going to fill in between them with smaller ones. Whatever size we can get in there. If I had a bigger space, the, the variation in size would be a bit smoother, but it'll be fine. And then as we get right to the center here, Tiny, tiny little ones, so there's very little white and more black. And hopefully that looks like that's disappearing down into a hole. Maybe, maybe not. Shadowing will help with that. Um, what others? I've got an interesting shape here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw what will become, I think, crescent moon around it. Very random crescent moon. But it is what it is. It's the fun of this. It's putting these little black bits in. I know the traditional ways to put the black bits first. But sometimes I like to put the auras in and work backwards down to the black bits. The ladybirds or ladybugs. 
So I am going to add another set of auras to this, like so. And then I'm going to switch my pen to the 07 because uh, I am finding it hard here to... I will find it hard with that pen because it is so thick and bold. And my hand is getting heavier at the time, the longer I go along. So, and then I'm going to aura these little lumps and bumps. The lovely thing about this is that it creates layers that lead your eye downwards and inwards, especially as when they, I don't have space for any more auras really, I have space there. But I'm going to fill these places in with black. And again, that leads your eye down and adding shadow around those layers will really help. Here, I think I might do... I'm going to do these like this, as if it's, there's channels there. And I'm just going to... Aura inside, and I'm going to make them look a bit like their flowers. Stamen on, odd shape. Just a couple left to do. This one, I'm going to do like. I'm just going to use the shape that it is rather than fill it in. As if there's um, the pangaea is partly hidden because. The other side of it could be filled in exactly the same way as this, let's be honest. Like so, and I'm just going to put lines down there. Which is fun. Okay, here, then I'm going to draw something like this here, and I'm going to add lines that go out, so it's a bit similar to the one I've done here, but it's not because I'm going to change it. Like so. And then for this one, I'm going to choose a center piece there or center place. I'm going to draw lines in and here I'm going to add some ink here so the end of the line looks like it connects with the outside part of this Pangaea. I'm going to go and aura these as if it's, well, I don't know what the, the pattern is, but that kind of shape. I'm also going to Aura again, and these auras will touch each other. Oops, wrong way. Like so. And then we've got these little puffy balls in the centre. And I'm just going to add... That'll work nicely, I'll tidy that bit up. So it's one aura, and then the rest is black. One aura, the next aura is black, filled in with black, sorry, underneath it, like so. So a different kind of flower. So there are my patterns for day, days 20 to 21. I'm going to go and get a black alcohol marker and some others and very quickly add some um, shape, shadow or colour to some of these and we'll see what we can make of it. Okay, I'm back with alcohol markers. So my first job really is I want to fill around the edge in with black. Luckily I've got some black paper down on my drawing board. So I'm just going to go around these with black quite quickly. And just, oh, I wanted to cover that one up entirely as well, didn't I? I did. Well, I've got this one here as well, which I want the... Um, I need to draw that aura around just to make sure that the black stays outside. I just think this will just tidy all of this up 
um, in a good way, I hope. So let's have a look here. Once I've got past the wibbly bits, the rest of it should be really quick and easy just to fill in. It's the wibbly bits that are the problem here. And I also need to put a little aura around this, these sections here. This one certainly, I think, because it's a complete Pangea. And because I've got these lines that um, come up to them, I will use a... A white gel pen I think just to make those disappear. That one will be okay I think as it is so it's just a question now of just getting up to right up to the edge and just completing all of these. There we are, job done. And it is very black looking but you know, white gel pens are your friend when you're working with a lot of black. Because I can make lots of things happen here, I'm sure. And I'm just going to go and look for a white gel pen. Oh, hang on, is that a gel pen? No, it's a glaze. So I don't want a glaze pen, I want a white gel pen. Failing that, I have got my thingy. What's that one? I think that's souf a souffle, yeah. Because you bet I can't find just a plain white gel pen now. Which is typical. I should have looked for it before I came back here, but hey-ho. As I say, it is what it is. There we are, white gel pen. That's better. Okay. So, my first job with my white gel pen is to make some of these lines here just disappear. And tidy that one up there. That one can just disappear, I think. Yeah, it can. Let's go that one. That's fine. Okay. So I think that's all I needed to make disappear. Here, we've got these little sections here where I'm going to fill them in. This one with dots in the points. And I'm going to fill some stars in elsewhere. Like a starry sky. Stars are always full of hopes and dreams, aren't they? We say wish upon a star. First star of the evening, I was always, well, you know, I always believe that was the case as a child, you know. See the first star of the evening, which is often Venus, very near where the sun had set. But still, it's maybe a planet, but it still appears to be a star, the evening star it still calls. So in this one, I'm going to try that um, Uni Posca pen. Just give it a good shake, because I haven't used it for a while. And this one will give much whiter shapes. So for this one, I'm just, instead of trying to draw stars, which tends to lift the ink up because I, the way I draw them when I go over things, I'm going to add in some, like snowflakes almost. And here I think I might have some of these spilling out as if we're sprinkling stardust from these. Perhaps hope for the world, for peace, or something quite poetic and prosaic about that. And this one, so I'm just going to have dots there which get gradually bigger, like so. So that works quite nicely, I think so. I'm going to add some white dots in to these as if they've they've got some stardust to sprinkle as well. Some wishes and good thoughts to come. There we go. And I'm going to put a little white dot inside each of these. It 
almost like there's a little glimmer of light there. And I'm going to do the same with these. Can't get one in there though. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to do with the whites? I don't think I do. No, I don't think I do. I think I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. I was thinking about drawing an aura in white all around everything, but I think I'll leave it as it is. Okay, the colours I've picked out, I've got um, some grey greens. So I've got, um, hopefully they're fairly light in colour. I'll have a quick look. Yeah, brilliant. And we're just going to add some shadows to places. I think I'll start with the medium colour and see how I get on. Because the medium colour, I can then fade out with the lightest colour. And if I need to use the darkest, I will. I usually use three colours for, for adding shadow, but today it may just be that I use two. So I'm putting the darkest colour in first, or the, the medium tone. And then I'm using the light to go over it and just blend it out at the edges. But I'm leaving some white in the middle of these. Because the white paper will become the highlight. Don't add white with alcohol markers, you leave them. Do you think I might need that little hint of darkness around the edge? Especially at the base, I think. And if I need to blend this out, then I can go back with my other markers. So I can go back with the medium one and just touch up the edge of that. And the same there. And here. And then with the lightest oh that was the lightest one that's fine it'll work so that adds this here now then I am going to go use the darkest one here because I really do want to put some really dark shadows right in the corners here because I really do want these to look like they are underneath the um the top bit and you can see I'm just using the medium one just to go along the edge just to get some um, blending of the two colours so we don't have harsh edges. And I'm just using the light one, trying to leave that little hint of white there. And so we end up with these that look very trumpet-like. I quite like that. I am going to use, want to do something with this outside bit. And I think I might use the dark one right along the edge here doesn't matter if it goes into the black region because it will work its way through. I'm going to use the medium one then. Like so. And just bring that round a little bit. I need to do the same here really. I'll go back with the darkest one in a moment. Around here because I can then use the lightest one here just to blend this out and to give a... Leave that white highlight there. So alcohol markers do dry a lot lighter than when they're wet. So I've got that going on. And with this, I'm going to add the darkest here with this outside edge aura where we've got these bits that sort of dip inwards. And I'll do that all the way along this because we've got this long aura here. And then I'll use the medium one just to blend it out just that little bit. Same here, here. I want to leave some white space so I can get some of the, the paler colour in, the palest colour in, but still have that white area in the middle for the highlights. doesn't have to match up with what's underneath because this will be at a different level so it will catch light in a different way but there we go so so there's my first lot done and instantly it's lovely how much dimension it really really does bring okay 
that's not my darkest this is my darkest I think. Yeah. so with these I'm going to put a lot of shadow at the bottom of these inner pieces inner areas I'm going to pick up the medium and blend it out actually I'm going to fill the rest of the space with this because I've just realised I need dark at the top but let's get this all blending to begin with And I'm going to just do this area and I'm going to finish this off um, at some point in time today and I'll post a, an image of it all shaded in. I just want to give you an idea of how I think about adding shadow and light and how I use alcohol markers to achieve this as well because they seem to be my weapon of choice for this. I say weapon in terms of, you know, artistic weapon. So that automatically starting to add some interest here with this section here I think I'm going to make the tips here the darkest because I want to keep some lightness around the the, the, the main part of the tip I think because I want that it to appear that it's got some interest you know interest going on I'm not going to leave white for this one because I want it to feel that it's a little bit lower than the one above as if we've got a step underneath but I also want the tip to be lighter to catch light from all of those stars as it were okay so for this I'm going to add dark shadow in some places I'm going to add it round the outside edge come back with my medium shade just go over these just to blend them out a little bit I'm also going to take it down a little bit down here I've gone a bit far with this one but it's okay because we can blend it through I'm going to put the lights in the gap and just blend over everything and that'll be quite nice then so when this dries this will fade back so I'll leave that for a moment okay um, all of these are going to be slightly different here so with this one I'm going to put my darkest right round the edge of this Pangea and where I've got a lot of these little circles I'm going to make it a little bit on the thicker side and I'm going to come back with my medium, go around the edge and blend back in towards it just that little bit. I'm not looking at how the circles are arranged, more the density of the ink and the shape of the Pangea. And then I'm going to use my lightest colour to go around here. And I'm going to leave quite a big white highlight in the centre because that will help to bring this up. I think I might need to go here and just in there, just a little bit, that will help. So we've got that going on. With this one, I still want a shadow right the way around the edge because I want it to appear that we're looking into something. But I really want the darkest areas to be deep down and I may come back and glaze over that to increase the darkness there. I'm going to bring the medium shade out. Again I'm just blending this out. I'm going to touch the edges here just a bit because I know that I'm going to use this to help to smooth those lines out. I'm no expert with alcohol markers but I do know that if I work while the alcohol marker is still quite damp on the paper it's quite good to you can blend them and lose that line and even here I'm able to blend with the lightest colour that darkest one I'm going to go back and just darken that centre up just that bit again 
bring the medium one in round that area I've just done just to blend it and that gives that an entirely different kind of feel okay I'm going to use just the medium one here with this because I am going to pop some shadows in underneath these so that we get the shadowing going on there I'm going to put some shadows around the bottom there but I'm also going to pop some of this colour right round the edge just to suggest that this is set underneath that, the lip of that Pangea. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I haven't got the space for fancy schmancy here. Um, with the holly ball, I'm going to fill the space with the darkest green. I'm not going to use black because there's a lot of black here. But I just think that dark green will work just as well. And I'm also going to use that Posca pen and add some little dots in. So again, it looks like we're looking into a starry sky or there's a scattering of stardust. And yeah, I was going to put highlights on those, but I'm not. So there's that going on. OK. Um, I'll leave the rest because they, I mean, you know, I've got... The medium toned one in my hand here so I am just going to add some shadow here to this Pangea. I'm going to put quite a lot on this side because I want it to look like that is actually radiating up to that top one. I do tend to make, well, I say I tend to make, I sometimes make the edges of my areas where I've added colour, you know, the colour sort of like puffy and rounded rather than completely straight because I quite like that um, almost organic look. Or, you know, the, the softer edge rather than something that's quite harsh so it's got a bit of a fluffiness to the edge of these colours. It's got those, so I just want my lightest one now. Oops, that's not the lightest. I've just been using the lightest. What am I doing? So I'll just bring that around. And I am then going to, where the highlight is, I am going to create a nice, clear definition there. Because it makes it look a bit more metallic. And then um, I've got... That's the medium. So I do need to add some medium around the edge, I think. Again, just to bring that darkness back out that I've lost by blending the medium out. And then I'll go back with the dark colour and add that right around the edge. So I'm just probed. Go back with that one. And just blend it a little bit with the medium one so that again I don't have that harsh edge but then I am going to go back with the lightest one and just allow that to be blended so that's quite fun there we are okay with these I am definitely going to trying to work out which is the darkest this one is put the darkest colour at the base of this put the same distance up each side and I'm going to use the medium shade okay I'm going to use the medium shade here to about the same distance then I'm going to use the medium shade on the top just a small smattering of it or a thin line because I can then go to the lightest colour and I'm going to blend this through but I want to leave a highlight across here in white I'm 
can do the same this side. And here. And that gives that kind of metallic kind of finish to it. And I'm just going to finish these edges off because I think that's what's needed here. With that distinct line and I'll just blend that back down. I could do with a colourless blender but I'm not going to go hunting for it at the moment. Because it'll be fine. Once it dries it'll be fine. So I quite like that. Okay. This one, using the darkest colour again, I'm going to create a shadow on I inside here, under there, under there, and along here. And I'm also going to do the same thing in this section. So I want those really dark shadows on either side. That's the lightest one. Let's go to the medium one and just catch the edge of these and add a bit of medium towards the centre. Oh, I didn't do a very good job of adding that dark one in here. Right, okay, so we can do that. That there. And then I can come back with the lightest and just Blend this out, but leave an area of white for the for that highlight. This one, I'm not really going to get that area of white, which is fine because it will help that line to disappear. Okay, last bit I'm going to do because I'll I'd approach this one in exactly the same way. I think I've got the darkest colour. Nope, that one is. And I'm just going to put a touch of the darkest colour where these overlap. Here. perhaps a little bit more just to bring out that stepping kind of shape here but I am drawing along the shape and filling that in then I'm going to use the medium oh, let's try the medium just to extend that Darkness, just that little bit, a bit more along the longer lines. And then I'm going to come back with the, the lightest colour and extend that somewhat. And um, I'm going to, at the edges here, I'm going to put in a shadow right along the edge as well. I just put medium in, but I really wanted to put the dark in. I'm just going to do that. And along the bottom, just to make it look like we're looking into a box. So I'll go back to the medium. Just going to extend these a little bit. I can see that I've gone outside the line a little bit here and there. But this is where a white gel pen is definitely your friend. So we've got that one going on. And so this is where, oh gosh, which one? That one. That one. I do wish they'd mark, mark a pen lids more sensibly. This is where I'm going to finish this for today after I've just touched up a couple of areas, like so. And there, where I've missed a little bit. And you can see the effects I can, I'm getting with the shadow and how it brings things to life. I think it's always interesting to see some of them, if not all of them. I do like the way that the crack here is letting the... the, the um, the stardust fall out and it may be that I actually add just a couple that fade away perhaps or get further and further and smaller like that as if it is really spilling out. 
So I'm going to say thank you ever so much for joining me. I hope you've really enjoyed this, that it makes sense to you and that you'll give it a go. My Inktober is now finished, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop looking at patterns and tangles and motifs, because I will. And I'm, I welcome any suggestions or requests in the comments or on the community tab or anywhere else in my social media, because I know that there's one person who, who does share things with me on Instagram. So I know I've got a couple of things there to look at on their behalf, Mr. Keith Chen. And I don't mean that in a horrible way. I, it's quite nice to um, have you say, this is what I would like you to do. Could you please do this? Because the answer is, I'll have a look, see what I can do. And um, we'll see where we're going. And I bet the fact I missed this little line here out for the white has bugged quite a few of you. I've got a bit of a mess going on here. That's fine. So there we are. So thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I hope to see you again in my next video, which must probably won't be tomorrow the 20th or the 30th. Some days can be awkward days for me to do everything I need to do. Um, it's, a, it's a strange kind of day, a Sunday for me. But um, look after yourselves, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Hoyle.